Sunday to you, sports fan. Thanks for joining us here in the Pro Team Network studios. This is the one that I am the host, Adam Neal, along with the crew and you. Fellas, what's going on? What's up? Good week of football. That's what's up. Hi, Adam. Okay. Uh, listen, well, you we'll, we'll talk a little bit about what's coming up this week. We've got the Apple Super Bowl championships, by the way, right here on Pro Network. Yeah, we'll like talk it. about that. And our game of the week actually turned out to be really the game of the week with Volcano Cleveland. We have that highlight in just a second, but first we're going to start off with the Real Rancho Rams. Can they keep things going at Community Stadium as they took on Atrisco Heritage? So a fourth and nine situation, and they're going to go for it. This is a throw to the left, and there it is. Touchdown for Real Rancho. to the end zone and just like that real rancho's in for the score Roger. he definitely is and here's the handoff up the middle once again and that's gonna go into the end zone is he in yes he is touchdown pretty much yeah like you said near midfield here's the handoff and that's gonna be to looks like demetrius roten and there he goes oh. on the right sideline look at that burst of speed demetrius roten oh my touchdown rio rancho yes one left Here's the handoff up to Morgan, and Morgan immediately finds a gap, and he's in just like that. Touchdown, Jalen Morgan. Miller looking to throw, and he's going to go to that receiver to the right. Touchdown, Rio Rancho. Fifty-seven, seven. That's the final score. The Real Rancho Rams continue their run here as they're now four and four on the season. They're undefeated in district play. Huge game that they've got against Volcano this week. We're going to talk about that, of course, uh, as we get to what Volcano Vista did this last week, taking on the Cleveland Storm. Now, Volcano Vista came in at six and one. Heavy underdogs. Can they compete with the Storm? Here's what happened at Lightning Bolt Stadium on Friday night. Keeper Davidson and he's in. Touchdown. Here we go. First and goal. Deathridge got a quarterback keep and he's in. Touchdown and Volcano Five Vista. For Davidson. He's got Watson on the near side. It's going to fade it to him. Trey Watson. Touchdown. And 10 Hawks driving. They need a touchdown here. Deathridge is going to heave one to the near side to Warner. Touchdown. David is going to run the option. Quarterback keeper of the sophomores got his second rushing touchdown. The cannon will. Defensive end in. And it's a play action. Deathridge is looking down the middle, wide open, and it's hot to his tight end. Cody Moon, the seniors' first touchdown. Dives to the end zone. Man, this beat is crazy. Big, big play here. There's a lot of room for Davidson, and he's in another touchdown. It's his third rush. Second down, there's some room. Chev has a cut to the outside, and he's in.
tossing to the end zone for the two-point conversion. Volcano actually had two timeouts. I'm sorry about that. Here's the handoff, breaking free. It's Dorian Lewis. It's a foot race. Lewis still going all the way. Two big offenses going at it. Now Cleveland win, and Cleveland's offense looks impressive. Defensively, maybe not so much. And then now Volcano Vista, everybody who watched that game should be put on notice because these guys are good, and these guys can make a run. And Jake Dethridge is making a name for himself, the fantastic senior quarterback for the Hawks. We're going to break those games down here in just a little bit. I refuse to talk to the crew in the zoo right now, especially because a certain gentleman is in there. So we'll be back in just a little bit right here on the rundown. Brian Colon will make a great auditor. Brian grew up pretty poor, so as auditor, protecting our tax dollars will be important to him. Brian is the only candidate with a background in finance and law. So he has what it takes to fight waste, fraud, and abuse as auditor. Brian invests in New Mexico by mentoring hundreds of young people. Brian will invest in education and expand opportunities for future generations. So how do we know, as auditor, Brian Colon will invest in New Mexico? Because he's invested in all of us. Thanks, Brian! Brian Colon, Democrat for Auditor. Albuquerque Computer and Electronics Recycling. It's Albuquerque's only company that's independently certified to receive and process all sorts of consumer electronics and business IT assets like computers, laptops, and cell phones. They've been around for 10 years. All the important and sensitive private information is wiped clean to DOD standards and all materials processed in the most environment-friendly way possible. Give them a call, 505-249-9495. Recycle your end-of-life electronics today. Well, I'm going to the frontier, walking to the cashier, order up a root beer and a number one. Cover it with green stuff, one scoop is not enough. Find a booth is real tough, back by the Duke. Meet my family, meet my friends in the quirkiest restaurant I have ever been. All of Albuquerque's favorite spot, it's the Frontier Restaurant. The Frontier Restaurant is a proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. Filling Phillies. It's the best in town. It's Filling Phillies. We use quality meats and fresh Amoroso rolls directly from Philly, where every sandwich is a work of art. You can order online or dine in. Come visit us today at all three locations, Uptown, the West Side, for our brand new location in downtown Albuquerque on 301 Central. I'm Troy Lafayne, head coach of the USL New Mexico franchise, and you're watching Pro V Sports. It is a terrible Monday, but we're glad you're here on the rundown. I'm Adam Deal. We're having some fun. We're going over some highlights from high school football, some big games this last Friday, and it's time to break them down in just a second. But let's flip over to college because there was maybe the game of the week in Division II college in the RMAC as Highlands pull out a tough, tough victory. Here's what happened. Cameron looking, throws it out, has a man out there, ball is caught. Touchdown, Cowboy. Going with the Jets sweep. There goes Alston into the end zone. Touchdown. <laughs> Under center looking. Now they're going to hand it off. There goes Alston. Alston first down and more. 10 5 out. Touchdown, Cowboys. Looking. Throws it up. Has a man out there. Falls caught. Touchdown, Cowboys. D.J. McFadden. Right wrist. Inside handoff. Going for the end zone. Deion Austin. And it's a touchdown for the Cowboys. That place kick, Farfan's kick, has got plenty of distance. It is up and it is good. Second down and 10 for the Cowboys. 
give it to Alston. Alston turns it up, 20, Alston 10, Alston to the house, a two Cowboys. Here it comes. Danny Cameron with game pressure. Now finds open receiver McIntyre right at the goal line. 52-51, two point conversion coming up. Danny looking, throws it in the end zone, caught. Does it count? Yes. How about it, Cowboy fans? Kick is on the way. It is no good. No good. The Cowboys win it. You might not have seen there at the end, but the, the kick did miss. And so Highlands come back and they get a huge win. How about that two point conversion to go ahead and get it done? So uh, their third win of the season and now looking good again. How about them Cowboys? Those are the real Cowboys right there. Uh, now it's time to include the crew in the zoo. We'll talk a little high school sports and what happened this week. The only guy that we will not talk to is a guy in that ridiculous yellow jersey. By the way, what are the Washington Redskins are? What, what is that yellow jersey? That's ridiculous, Luna. What is that? That's not even a good jersey. It's a winning color, Adam. That's a winning color. Yeah, for now. What? You know what? I don't. I don't even want to look at you. I don't even want to talk about it. I don't even want to think about it. It's good. It's in the past. <laughs> Heroes get remembered, but legends never die. All right, this is great. Iwani, I'll go to you. <laughs> Cleveland, Volcano, what do you think? You know, what I took away from Cleveland and Volcano was um, I'm sold on Jake Dethridge. Um, he, he showed up to play in this game. Um, he was composed. He, um, he did everything for that team, and um, – I think Volcanoes the legit is a is a legit top five team now. Um, I think they definitely proved that in this game. Um, but also too, on the other hand, the Cleveland Storm. I mean, are they not the best team in 6A? Like, I mean, I feel like Dorian Lewis doesn't even like at the beginning of the season. Dorian had to have like 20 carries a game, 30 carries a game. But now they're doing it with passing the ball. Um, you know, I feel like I feel like they still got a little bit of um, room for improvement on the defensive side of the ball, but um, I mean, as long as nobody can stop them on offense, whether they're running it with Dorian or they're throwing it with uh, da David what, Davidson, is that yeah, his name? Yeah, Jeff Davidson. Yeah, so if he uh, if he keeps throwing the way that he's throwing, I mean, this is a classic uh, Cleveland team, Adam. We've seen. In the past three or four years, they do the, the same exact thing at the beginning of the year. Kind of shaky, but still beating teams. And now they're just playing their best. They're just building up and playing their best football. Should, should they be worried, though, about their defense? I mean, Volcano was able to hang up a ton of points on them. And it seemed like, I mean, Cleveland was up three scores. Seemed like the game was over. And then all of a sudden, Volcano Vista made it a two-possession game. And I don't know if Heath Ridenour should be super impressed with his team's victory. Offensively, yes, but they couldn't stop Volcano either. Yeah, I mean, it's I'd say it's a little cause for concern. Um, I feel like they have the philosophy, Ben, but don't break on defense. And um, as long as they they don't break, I feel like they'll be they'll be just fine. And then Volcano Vista Deathridge. I mean, this is a team now that that people have to be aware of, and I think. I think they could beat anybody. They could beat anybody. Once the playoffs start, they can beat anybody, and they're going to be playing for bye. And so now their next game against Rio Rancho becomes this the, the biggest game, I think, of the season for both Rio Rancho and for Volcano Vista. Oh, yeah, definitely. It has huge playoff Im implications for both. Um, you know, and it doesn't help that uh, – it doesn't help Volcano seeding-wise that um, – or did Centennial win? Centennial won. Centennial right? won. Yeah, so Centennial beats Hobbs. And so, I mean, they're one. staying where they're at. I mean, and Eldo lost. So, Eldo lost really, 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 really bad. Nobody how saw did they that. Lose, so. Jason, how did they lose 47-0? to zero? Nobody knows. Nobody, Nobody knows. knows. And we saw Clovis against Manzano. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't even sold at all. But I – I don't know. I got to see some footage. Maybe I'll check out the pixel footage, but I doubt I could see anything on that. I mean, well, it was in Clovis, so you're not going to see it. Dang uh, it. I'm shocked. 
Your boy Deathridge looks good though. He's that's the, that's what I say is a deciding factor. He can read it a lot better. He if he knows he doesn't have a receiver, he'll throw it out. He, if he knows if he's gonna do that that run option, just dump it over the top or just run it, which I think Cleveland didn't expect him to be taking it through through the Death Valley of Cleveland defense and just run it for a touchdown. But I'm Jay interested. I'm interested for that Rio Rancho Volcano game. JB, stop editing for a minute and, and roll over. What I want to know is you saw the Real Rancho game. We knew Real Rancho would beat a Trisco, but how was our man Austin Denton's first high school football game? You know, Austin did awesome, man. It was good. He, he was prepared. He was enthusiastic. Uh, maybe some, some of uh, our other announcers, uh, Adam Dill, should take uh, some, some pointers from Austin. But, no, Austin did great. It was a, it was a good game. Like you said, we knew Real Rancho was going to go in and uh, pull it out, but – they showed the dominance. They asserted themselves. It looks like uh, Real Rancho has righted that ship, and and these district games coming up: Real Rancho versus Volcano, Real Rancho versus Cleveland. Those are going to be turn out to be pretty good games. Uh, let me just say it now: our, our my fifty game of the week statewide TV. It's going to be Volcano Vista at Real Rancho. I mean, that is that is going to be exciting. I think I think we're going to be really excited to do this one. Last time Volcano was at Real Rancho, it was a Hell Mary Real Rancho beating Volcano. We're going to have to get that clip and show that sometime this week because it's one of the wilder plays that we've seen. If we can get a finish like that, I think everybody, no matter who wins it, will be excited about it. Oh, I'm yeah, sure. definitely. And I mean, Austin, we knew we knew he was going to come up and kill it. Like when you when you have to prepare to to interview the likes of Peyton Manning, Vaughn Miller, Nick Saban, Roger Goodell. I mean, Austin, Austin Denton be kicking it with prime time. So, you know, you know, he's ready to go, you know. He's, so, yeah, but he's. As far as uh, Rio Rancho goes, though, I'm super excited to see this game. Um, I feel like their record doesn't reflect how good their team is. Um, I mean, they're only they're only like what the heck kind of loss was to was to Las Cruces early in the season. I mean, we can make cases for all the, the their other losses, Centennial um, and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm excited, and you know, I think uh, I think Cleveland wasn't ready for um, going back to Cleveland. That Cleveland wasn't ready for uh, Jake to be a hundred percent. Like he was ready to go, and um, it just it just gets me thinking. Um, if uh, Pavia was playing, like, would they be any better? The St. Pius transfer, if they would have gotten him to play. No, this Deathridge season, is the guy. Like that, that's what I'm saying. Like, Jake is, like, they're, they're happy. No, with Jake no right shot now. at Pavia, but I mean, I'm just, I, Jake, he's proven himself. Like, this team is his team. Oh, yeah. And he played fearless the other night, too. That's what I loved. He was, he played fearless, but he was composed and he wasn't trying to make too big of a play, but he was just trying to make the right play. And man, he's, he might be like, I didn't realize how fast how fast he was until I saw him in person. Like, I mean, Gabe Smith's obviously probably the fastest quarterback like in in six A. But I mean, Jake's right on him, man. Like, there is a couple plays where he like we're just like, oh, he's gonna get sacked, and he just scramble out of scramble out of it, and make something out of nothing. So I think you got to look at how good he was. I think he might be the the. He might win. I know James Yotis does an award. Who's the best QB in the Metro every year? And in this year, he said he was struggling to know who that was because Gabe Smith went down. Also, Nick Garland went down, and so he didn't know who that was going to be. I think stat-wise and just the way he's playing, it could be Jake Deathridge now. Um, but then I'll be honest. You also have to look at the sophomore quarterback and Jeff Davison for Cleveland and what he's done. Last week, he set a school record of passing yards and touchdowns. He was fantastic this week. He had three rushing touchdowns and two passing touchdowns. This kid's a sophomore. He doesn't look like a sophomore. Yeah, and that's the crazy thing, Adam. Like, we're talking about Cleveland, and all these guys are underclassmen. <laughs> like, like this might be the worst that they are in the next two or three years, which is insane. I don't think the state which wants is to insane, hear that. Which is literally insane. Like, I can't even wrap my mind around that. But, um, you know, Rio Rancho, I'm excited. This is – I'm equally excited as – last week for this Rio Rancho Volcano game. Me too. Because I feel like they're both trending upwards at the right time. So um, and Rio Rancho isn't no slouch. Um, they have champion pedigree program there too. And, um, and they've, they've gotten better. It's clear. I mean, yeah. I think they're oh, yeah, ready definitely. now to make their state. And, so um, we'll see. Yeah, it's in Rio Rancho. 
So, um, you know, I'm just really excited. I hope I hope this is like a this is a Ali Frazier kind of thing, you know, just heavyweights on off, just having big games or big plays on offense. Um, I'm just excited to, for my 50 for sure this week. That'll be good. Uh, all right, Luna, do you, do you want to go ahead and get your shots in? Let's go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about how Adrian Peterson just ran all exactly. over the Listen, Cowboys. there's a silver lining here, okay? This is the silver lining is I was wise enough to start Adrian Peterson in my big fantasy league, and so – Regrettably, you know, he was able to, to, to get me a nice lead. So there you go. <laughs> well, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's two wins in a row. Let's see where we go from there. You know, he's so quiet about it. And it, it just it, it frustrates me even more, like how confident and quiet he's just sitting there. It's just making me mad. Fantastic can just turn around and just, like, you know, go down. So he's enjoying the ride. And the Redskins fan. Is that it? Is there anything else, Luna? God, we're going to be back here in a moment on the rundown. Gary Johnson has a record of independence and success. In his eight years as New Mexico governor, our state flourished. Now politicians of both parties in D.C. are spending us into bankruptcy. As a successful businessman and governor, Gary Johnson knows how to create jobs and keep government under control. Gary Johnson's only loyalty is to you. Send a historic message to Washington by voting for an independent voice. Vote for Gary Johnson for U.S. Senate. This is Coach Borrego of the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, hello to all you parents out there in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Uh, I want to congratulate uh, 38 years for the AYBL. You guys are doing a great job. You've shaped a lot of lives, young men and women, and you'll continue to do that. Parents get involved, sign your kid up. Uh, it's a great program. Uh, it helped shape who I am today. It helped shape uh, me as a basketball player, as a coach. So get out there, sign them up. Have a great season. Good luck to everybody. Hi, my name is Sam Lang and I'm with ABQ IT. Do you have a student in need of a laptop, desktop, or cell phone? We have computers that will meet anyone's budget. Please call 505-582-6583 Every purchase made, 10% will go towards your school. At ABQIT, we make it happen. Gary Johnson has a record of independence and success. In his eight years as New Mexico governor, our state flourished, and he left with a surplus. Gary Johnson did exactly what he promised, cut taxes, reduced the size of state government, and held legislature responsible for reckless spending. Now politicians of both parties in D.C. are spending us into bankruptcy. They can't stop their addiction to spending, and they don't know how to create jobs. As a successful businessman and governor, Gary Johnson knows how to create jobs and keep government under control. You won't have to ask where Gary Johnson's loyalties lie. It won't be to a party. It won't be to the D.C. swamp. Gary Johnson's only loyalty is to you. His only goal is to help New Mexico. Send a historic message to Washington by voting for an independent voice. Vote for Gary Johnson for U.S. Senate. Protect Freedom Pack is responsible for the content of this advertising. It's time to make your plans and be at New Mexico's premier annual sports event. The 13th annual New Mexico Bowl is Saturday, December 15th, high noon at Dreamstyle Stadium. I'm Jeff Simbiata, Executive Director of the New Mexico Bowl. Be with us as once again, college football's bowl season kicks off right here in Albuquerque. Bring your friends, bring your colleagues, host your holiday party at the New Mexico Bowl. It's annually one of the most exciting games of college football's bowl season. Bottom line, it's a whole lot of fun. Visit NewMexicoBowl.com or call 925 5999, the New Mexico Bowl, where bowl season begins. ProView Network Crew Assemble!
High School Sports are back live on ProView Sports Network. Dream Style Remodeling has been wowing. Don't sacrifice quality of flavor when you're in a hurry. Golden Pride offers ribs, fried chicken, green and red chili breakfast burritos, and Frontier Cinnabons. Four great locations or visit us online at goldenpride at abq.com. Golden Pride Barbecue Chicken and Ribs, proud supporter of ProView Sports Network. All right, so some big games that went on across 6A and 5A this week. Let's throw up the top 10 poll from last week. This is going to change, and we also have bracketology that's going to change for you. Cleveland wins. La Cueva was off. Centennial win, and they virtually clinched District 3 unless they were to lose. And then on their bye, uh, the right teams have to win. Mayfield, they could, they could have a three-way tie basically is what could happen. Rio Rancho won. We mentioned Hobbs loses to Centennial in a tight one. How about El Dorado getting thumped? To Clovis, Clovis, excuse me, it makes zero sense to me. Carlsbad was on a bye week, and so things are going to get shaken up a little bit. So we'll throw you to 6A bracketology now, and this is going to change. El Dorado is going to drastically drop, and Clovis is going to drastically rise because of what they did. Manzano, by the way, they barely beat Sandia. I don't know if that means anything. They do get the win, but they do barely win, and Cibola. They're on the outside of this. They beat West Mesa. Do we have the bracketology, Jay? There we go. So this is going to change. Clovis, I think, is going to rise. I think El Dorado, El Dorado is going to drop. Dra I mean, we're talking like a nine seed now for El Dorado. Um, and their game against Manzano, which is on Thursday night, and we've got it for you here on Provi Networks, is going to mean everything. It'll be very interesting. Let's take a look at the 5A bracketology now. There were some games that will shake things up, and... Um, Artesia, they beat Roswell, two-point conversion at the end of the game to get it done. They're still going to be top three seeds, all of them, including Goddard, Las Lunas with a win. And then how about Boleyn? They thump Valley. Piedro Vista beats Farmington. Not a lot changes, really, though Artesia will be ahead of Roswell. That's kind of how things look. Um, so some really big game. Listen, we got two weeks left. Two weeks of regular season. And then we'll seed this baby, and then we already start state playoffs. So, uh, any last thoughts, guys? Can we put up that 6A again? <clears throat> All right. So, um, did Carlsbad lose? Do we ever find out? Car Carlsbad had a buy. So, I mean, this is this is not updated, right? So, this is going to change. This is just based on last week. But El Dorado is definitely out of there. How El about, can't how win about district my Cibola Cougars on Thursday? destroying West Mesa. I still don't know as if they're in the tournament. I mean, the only team they could jump right now is Carlsbad because Manzano is drastically improving their seed with each win. I'll tell you this. You know what's really interesting with Clovis beating El Dorado is District 2. Now let's pretend because Manzano beat Clovis, Clovis beat El Dorado, La Cueva beat Manzano. Let's just pretend. Let's just pretend that La Cueva goes up to Clovis and loses in the last week of the season. There could be a three-way tie for first place in District 2. So La Cueva better take care of business up in Clovis, which is a hard place to play. I'm very interested in how that finishes. Yeah, that could be a very interesting scenario, Adam, um, especially with uh, 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 Smith supposedly supposed to come back. Is he coming back soon? this week, do you yeah, think? Yeah, like, I don't know. I mean, there's only two weeks left. I would say if if I was uh, Charlie Dotson, I'd have him. I'd have him come in next week. I'd save him this week and have him play the last game of the regular season. Yeah, I don't. You know, I don't but, know as if their seed matters anymore. Like yeah, they could be a ten seed, and with Gabe Smith, they'll yeah, be fine. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. And um, you know, if they're following, if they're following farther and farther behind, I mean, is it really worth risking your season or your potential playoffs just to just to get a win in the regular season when you know you're about to be. Uh, a uh, five to six seed, seven seed. I'm with you. I think they should save them for playoffs. I feel like it means nothing right now what they can do, uh, whether they beat Manzano or not. That game will be on Thursday night. Hey, listen, we got to get out of here. So coming up Wednesday, we'll have all of our matchups for you. We'll have fresh yeah, bracketology. Right. We'll have a new 4A bracketology for you, 5A and 6A, and all of our matchups. And then, of course, our pickums. That's coming up on Wednesday. Thanks for joining. A happy Monday to you. It's been a fun day on the rundown.